Welcome back to Economics. This is Dr. Kling. This is a lecture that I uh, misrecorded or messed up the recording <coughs> first time I did it. So I have the uh, what I wrote up on the blackboard. Now I have to try to remember what I meant to say and see if I can say it again. Topic is natural monopoly and price discrimination. So what I drew on the left hand side over here is just an ordinary competitive firm <coughs> with a U-shaped average cost curve, upward sloping marginal cost curve due to diminishing returns. Now what happens if we don't have diminishing returns? If we have something that has very high fixed costs, so I've got uh, <coughs> so the fixed costs are high, actually don't draw them here, it has low marginal cost. So the marginal cost is low and constant. You notice up here on the left hand side in the competitive firm the marginal cost was rising. Here <coughs> the marginal cost is constant and that means that the average cost here or here is falling. So you, you think of a, a, an electric utility. So you, you build a giant power plant and then the marginal cost of producing electricity might be pretty small uh, so that <coughs> that the average cost uh, keeps falling the more you produce the more the average cost the more that that fixed cost is being spread over users so average cost is falling it sort of asymptotically approaches the marginal cost so the problem uh, with this natural monopoly is that if it prices at marginal cost, which would be, we, we found that where price equals marginal cost, that's allocatively efficient. Uh, <coughs> if it prices at marginal cost, it'll lose money because the average cost is always above the marginal cost. On the other hand, if it prices at average cost, it won't be allocatively efficient because average cost will be above marginal cost and therefore price will be above marginal cost and people won't consume enough. So again the story is we have a big upfront or fixed cost, low marginal cost. The more you sell, the lower the average cost. And the, that also means that in some sense the lower the price you can charge. Assume that you would price, you'd have, you're bound to price at least as high as average cost. So the more you sell, the lower the price you can charge and still make a profit. And so that makes it a natural monopoly. For example, if you are at the incumbent firm, that's the, you, you know you started the uh, you were the first firm in this business with a natural monopoly, then you're going to start out with the largest customer base and the lower lowest average cost. Therefore, you can always charge a lower price than a competitor who's just starting out and who is way up here on the demand curve, has a very low quantity, <coughs> um, and it's going to be a long time before they can charge as low a price as you can and still break even. So there's this natural tendency to be able to just drive competitors out of the market by charging a price just over your average cost if you're the first entrant in there. Uh, so what I meant to write here was it pays to be big uh, in, a, in a natural monopoly setting. Uh, it's easier to work. So you have this problem that for optimal utilization of the or optimal quantity price is equal to marginal cost but you can't make a profit at marginal cost. So price is going to be greater than marginal cost. That means that some potential customers won't buy. And so and there's also a loss of consumer surplus. So a natural monopoly, <coughs> like any monopoly, is going to tend to be inefficient because it's going to be pricing above marginal cost. But if price were equal to marginal cost, and marginal cost is less than average cost, then the firm loses money. Uh, so it's got not going to price there. So what are the various solutions for that? We don't have a perfect optimum. That is, if they price 
uh, below average cost, they're losing money. That can't be a social optimum, or it's unlikely to be a social optimum. If they price at average cost or higher, since average cost is above marginal cost, that means they're pricing above marginal cost, and that can't be a social optimum. So you have a bunch of possibilities. One possibility is you have a regulated monopoly, which is sort of forced to sell at the average price. That's the way uh, electric utilities were traditionally regulated. You sort of uh, give them enough of a price that they can make a profit, but you try to then hold down their price so that they don't take an excess. Uh, another solution is a subsidized monopolist, like the Postal Service. So maybe the Postal Service can charge you a low price for mailing a letter, maybe something close to marginal cost. That means that they don't make their average cost, um, but you get a subsidy for that. Another example, uh, in addition to the Postal Service, would be the, the Metro, the DC subway system, public transit. So with public transit, you want there to be a low marginal cost because you want people to take the transit but that means that the they maybe won't be able to break even and so the way to get them to break even is to give them a subsidy so a subsidized monopolist is another solution to the the quandary of <coughs> having a natural monopoly where the marginal cost is low uh, relative to average cost. And then finally a solution is price discrimination. If you can find a way to charge uh, little at the margin for people to use it but have them somehow pay for the fixed cost. So you charge a high price for users with inelastic demand uh, and charge marginal cost for everyone else. So examples of that um, might be uh, something like the uh, cell phone plans where you, it's a high price for the people for their first few minutes. If somebody just wants to have a, a low volume plan, you charge a pretty high price. And then for a higher volume plan, you can make the marginal cost of using the minutes close to zero. They used to have even unlimited plans where you could have sort of unlimited minutes um, so that was a low marginal cost for everyone else, but a high price for the um, just to get into the plan. So you kind of make people pay for your fixed cost by charging a high price for users with inelastic demand, or, or to each user up to their point of inelastic demand, and then you charge a low price uh, for the marginal units, so that the marginal cost. The, the the consumer plays, faces the low marginal cost for the next unit. Um, okay, so, so many firms, I argue, have this characteristic of marginal cost less than average cost. Uh, so it's not just your standard natural monopoly, but all sorts of firms have that, and that's why I think you'll you see a lot of price discrimination. And the uh, other example of price discrimination that I wrote up is uh, prescription drug prices. That they're high in the U.S. and low overseas. And so in the U.S. you might pay $15 for a pill, and overseas <coughs> you might only pay $1. Well, the marginal cost might be $0.10, cents, so the companies are still making a profit selling these drugs overseas, but as long as you don't then re-import drugs from Canada or whatever, which people obviously have been doing to some extent, but as long as they prevent that, then they're able to price discriminate. They can charge more for the American consumers who are willing or able to pay more. They can charge the $15. They charge the $1 to the Canadian or whatever who might not be willing to pay as much. And that way they get as much demand as possible overseas, and they're getting the... the uh, advantages of low marginal cost while still having an average cost that's enough to make a profit. And I think I'll stop there. <laughs>